Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. Today what we're going to be doing is reviewing the Super Magna um, from a commuter perspective. So uh, what we're going to be doing is riding this bike. Oh, you can't see me. I have become invisible. Um, what we're going to be doing today is riding the bike home from work. Uh, it is an absolutely stunning day today. So it's going to be a bit different to some of the other videos that I've done lately in rain and miserable weather but what we're going to be doing is talking about the comfort of this bike um, you know what it's like for storage what it's like for fuel economy and then where it lands on the fun and practical scale so for full disclosure what we have on here is a Michelin Commander 2 rear tire uh, Michelin Commander 2 front tire and the storage is minimal at best uh, you do have luggage straps down here uh, so you can actually tie stuff to the back wheel so it is slightly better than for instance the Jixer but not by a whole pile but um, I, that really doesn't matter because that's what this that's not what this bike is about but we'll talk more about that when we're out on the road I would like to just point out a couple of modifications that I've made to this bike so on the back I have Hagon shocks um, which are you know sprung from my weight which does make a difference. And on the front, I have a Fastec fork brace and also Hyper Pro springs um, in there, which again are sprung more for my weight. So there's definitely, a, you know, a, a couple of differences to note uh, from this Super Magna to another one. So in the main, this bike is a stock machine. Okay, so I think that is us until uh, I get to the end of the motorway. Please do enjoy the little motor, mo look at that, it's so cool, it's so cool, anyway, <laughs> do enjoy the little motorway music bit that I have, it should hopefully give you a sense, and the reason I do that, someone asked me why I do that section, is it should try to give you a sense of, you know, how it feels out on the open road just cruising, and it's, <laughs> today is going to be a good one because this, this type of weather, honestly, if the weather's like this, Ireland is the best country in the world to live. Unfortunately, it happens far too little. So it's not the best country in the world to live, but it's pretty, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. Get that lean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, oh, this bike. So, okay, as I said, it's important to call out the mods I've made to this bike because the suspension has made a huge difference to the comfort. And the comfort being one of the primary focuses of uh, my commuter reviews because comfort is very important. Commuting, you won't use you won't use something if it's not comfortable unless you really like if you really have to but obviously if you're watching these with the idea of commuting on it um you know you're probably not gonna want to now the thing is right we'll get right into it so i slated this bike a little bit sorry people of this small town 
ruin your ear holes. Um, I kind of slated this on the full review uh, for comfort, and there's there's a good reason for that, okay? Because for me, when I do a full review or a full first ride review, and this one was a six month review on a bike, it's it's what I tend to want to use my bikes for, which obviously is a little bit more touring orientated. But to be honest, for commuting, this is a lovely, lovely, comfortable bike. Uh, the only thing I would change, you know, if I really wanted to use it as a commuter all the time, whoa, that's mud on the road, uh, is the, I'd probably put like a fly screen on it. So Will from Adaptive, if you wanna, you wanna make a fly screen, we really, we really should make something at some point. We've been talking about it for a while. So I'll probably eventually put a fly screen of some sort on this bike. I think it would suit the look and it would definitely help with wind protection um on the motorway and stuff everything up to like 100 kilometers an hour you don't really need you know wind, wind protection so when i'm just cruising at 100 you know it's not too loud and uh, the wind isn't so bad so it's absolutely fine now but you know for, from a tour from a a commuting perspective the comfort like you know you have nice wide pegs on these as standard the standard bars I find quite comfortable the standard seat for like commuting distances of what do I do uh, by the time I get home it's probably like 55 kilometers each way average something like that maybe 60 each way average um, the seats absolutely fine for that distance in one go so you know if you're even might if you're six oh yes <laughs> disclaimer uh, i am six foot seven and i weigh around around about 126 kg uh so two meters tall and i know i'm mixing up units here but it doesn't matter two meters tall and around 270 pounds ish i'm not sure on the pounds exactly but it's it's around about that so like realistically you know if you have the bike set up as i do if you have you know comfortable springs in the front forks if you have rear suspension set up nicely for you this is actually a very comfortable bike with joe's couple of small mods and they they're not big money you know the rear shocks were pretty cheap i think in the grand scheme of things and i have videos for all of these but they made such a big difference and you know on roads like this this bike really it's what it's made for in my opinion you know these type of bendy roads that you're never going super fast on on this bike anyway um it just it's just beautiful on them you know it just flows through corners and on a day like today the michelin commander 2 tires are absolutely perfect uh, if you've seen the review i did on the michelin commander 2s really not good in rain but on in in the dry you can just see i have complete and utter faith in these tires in the dry they're they're absolutely brilliant in the dry but what i don't think i really need to say too much else on comfort to be honest it is comfortable for like a, a a general commuting distance if you're doing about an hour it's absolutely fine if you're doing more than an hour and you're my size especially uh i love oh look at that view look at that view every time i love coming home this way that just ah uh, you gotta you gotta pause look i even dropped back from the washing machine car that's how that's how much that that would just make you take a pause but you know if you're my height i think anything up to like an hour is fine um the one thing i will say is on the motorway it <laughs> there is no wind protection so that's a bit harsh or can be a bit harsh and yeah that's that's it really so it is it is comfortable <laughs> we'll, we'll say that much around the storage these bikes as stock you could get uh sissy bars with them and if, if I ever do put a sissy bar on this, which I do want to, uh, I think the practicality points will jump up massively. Because, you know, that means you can just, like, the bag I have on my back right now, I could just strap to the sissy bar and take all that weight off my back. And then it's as good as a top box, really. Um, and I do, like, the look of this bike is very important to me because when I bought it, you know, I bought it because I wanted a Super Magna. I wanted the look of a Super Magna. So for me... I would never put like boxes or top boxes onto this. I have this bike because to me it's a, uh, it's iconic. This look is iconic. The upswept exhaust and everything else. So practicality wise, you know, the thing is, and we're, we're near, we're near our fuel up point now. 
Uh, it's not so good. <laughs> it's not so good on fuel. And a lot of that is due to how it sounds. Um, if you watch me in videos with this bike before, I absolutely thrash this thing because it sounds like it enjoys it. If you're just chilling on this bike, it sounds borderline upset with you. It wants to be abused. But you know, from that perspective, because it likes to be thrashed, it likes to be used. It's not so good on fuel, um, as we'll check when we come up here. So, uh, yeah, when we fuel up, we'll get back to practicality. Oh, hello, Petrus. 145, 146 per liter. Jesus Christ. Whew. Oh my God, I better, I better drop my pants. So as always, we have an amazing choice between premium 95 unleaded, uh, premium 95 unleaded, or premium 95 unleaded. I wonder which one I'll go for. I think premium 95 unleaded sounds like a good choice. So 101 kilometers, or 102 we'll say. The old windy method to reset the clocks. So for seven 18 liters. Whatever that worked out as fuel economy wise, I'll put up on screen now, but it, that's immaterial. I don't, I don't actually care. I don't care what it does on fuel because it doesn't matter for this bike. You know what I mean? It's just, this bike is awesome either way. What I do care about is if I was to bring this bike to work every day, I'd have to fill it up uh, every single day. Now, that's not really a huge problem, but it is a bit of an annoyance because, you know, some days you just don't want to stop at the petrol station. I don't, I don't think I need to explain it more than that, than some days I just really, really don't want to stop at the petrol station. So this, that's, that's a major drawback for me on this one, is I do have to fuel it up every day. You have around about, in my experience, I have around about seven, uh, sorry, 11 liters usable uh, in this tank, and I'd use seven point whatever it was. Um, so there wasn't really a whole pile left in there, you know? There wasn't really a whole pile of range left. Uh, to use so that's obviously uh, a not not a good point from a commuting perspective it doesn't fuel gauge it doesn't have a low fuel indicator so i know a lot of people like those things um for especially for commuting i'm not going to get into the fancy new stuff of like gear indicators and all that uh because to me those are like really you know they're 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 nice optional extras but you certainly don't need them my god i caught up to you already how and but that's the thing with this bike is the practicality doesn't really matter too much uh, like I said, the, the fueling is a bit of a pain, um, but it's it's actually a nice f bike in traffic and stuff. Uh, if you're riding this in cold weather, actually, one thing that is, I'm not going to say it's practical, but if you're riding this in cold weather, um, because it's an older engine and, you know, it's, it's completely bare right beside your legs, it does actually heat your legs. On cold mornings and stuff, it, heat, it heats your legs a nice amount. It's incredibly durable it doesn't really care if you warm it up uh, it's like the easiest bike in the world to service ah we're magically outside of the traffic how how, how did they all get behind me um you know so uh, actually that's one thing from an overtaking perspective there's plenty of power in this bike if you're trying to get past really shit drivers and you just want to you want to enjoy the road it has it has the power to do that it's this isn't the fastest bike in the world, but it has plenty of power to move when it when it needs to. So really, all in all, it is it is a practical bike. Um, once you can look past the fuel, both the fuel economy, which I'm predicting is not good, and also the fuel range, which is not good. It's you know like you get 100 miles out of a tank if you're doing well. It's 160 kilometers, 100 miles. That's if you're going well. I don't think I would hit that on that tank because I spent so much time on the motorway and with the wind blast, it does hold me back and I'm quite a big guy. So yeah, it does. It definitely, it definitely affects it. Then the fun, just based off noise alone, this thing is absolutely incredible. Um, if I, it, honestly, and I mean this, I'm, I'm like if you watch the channel at all, every single time I get on this bike, uh, it brings a smile to my face. It is so move, come on. Oh my god, people! Beautiful! Oof! Oof! Just even a, from that little section there, right? 
that should tell you this bike is an absolute laugh like if all your commuting roads were like this one that i'm on right now i don't think i'd ever not use this to go to work particularly in a like a shorter shorter blast so this bike is an absolute it's just, it's just it's the best bike in the world for like 20 or 30 miles you have so much fun so much fun banging through the gears you know 50 60 kilometers say absolutely best bike in the world and i genuinely i mean that you cannot you cannot have more fun than on a bike like this because here's the thing like i can absolutely redden redden the bumhole um off this bike the beauty of it is i'm pretty much never breaking any speed limits because it's not a it's not a super sport bike you know it's not like like the cbf it, the cbf is very very quick the the jixer is extremely quick those two bikes you can get yourself into a lot of trouble very very quickly whether you're on the way home from home from work or not and i don't think anyone ever wants to get stopped by the uh, law enforcement authorities uh, on the way home from work irregardless of what country you live in you just want to have a bit of fun you know chill out on your way home and this is a bike you can do that on this bike is it's an absolute blast just like crank the throttle you're still not going very fast it sounds absolutely unbelievable listen to that orchestra i have an orchestra between my legs oh that's that sounded dirtier than i meant just just listen <laughs> like you know what i mean <laughs> whoa don't kill me thank you you see that's why you don't overtake over a blind hill you absolute clowns they could have killed me or the cyclists people are people are stupid wait till you can see anyway so one other thing that i mentioned in the jigsaw video that i should feel i should mention here too is this bike is you know an older machine so 1987 so again if you live in a city environment um while this bike is a little bit harder to rob than the jigsaw because it's, it's quite heavy and has a, and has a good uh, steering lock on it it's not just a barrel lock it's actually a like a lower down steering lock uh, a little bit harder to break than the barrel lock it is it is still an older machine that is infinitely easier to rob than a more modern bike uh, with an immobilizer and all that crack it you know for me commuting wise the only thing that stops me using this more often uh, is the storage in the fuel range uh, and, and you know the CBF is more comfortable so it kind of loses on those three points is comfort fuel range and storage just because I always have to carry a backpack on it and that's kind of where it loses out from a fun perspective this uh, this bike makes, makes me smile every time I'm not saying the CBF doesn't but this bike is just I don't know there's something about it I don't know is it because it's a vintage bike I don't know it's because it's as raw as you know like a a just freshly murdered beast in the field and you're just chewing on its haunch um, you know that it's that raw you know what I mean it's such it's it's an experience and that's I think that's why I love riding this bike so much is every time you take it out it's not like there's no molly coddling you know it's never taking care of you it's never gently bringing you to a stop like on the CVF this bike will not look after you you know what I mean it'll punch you in the back of the head if you accelerate too too snappily because it's a shaft drive the brakes are yeah you know they're good they're fine but they're from 1987 and the rear is a drum there's there, there is no refinement to this bike and that's something you know if you want a bike that you can absolutely love for 10 minutes at a time on the way home and you hit some twisties or you know you just love making noise between buildings or something if you're a bit if you're a bit of an asshole like that like me i'm not calling you an asshole because i am i am that person if you're like me in that regard then to be honest there's not there aren't many better bikes out there as a kind of an all-in-one commuter and and funzy boy what the hell those new kidney bean grills on the bmws they're absolutely disgusting i'm sorry bmw you swung you missed and then you fell face first in a big pool of excrement they are hideous hideous anyway i shall talk to you all when i'm back at the shed so welcome back to the shed um 
Would I recommend this bike for commuting if you really wanted this bike and this bike only? Uh, yeah, to be honest, like I wouldn't, like I said, I think I said it in the Jixxer video, same as, you know, yes, it's not an ideal commuter. It doesn't have the massive booty of the uh, CBF, but it's fine. Uh, the, like I said, the one drawback is definitely the fuel range, but to run through everything really quick. So is it comfortable? Yeah, if you're as big as me, you're likely to get like a small bit of pain, not pain, discomfort in your lower back over time uh, if you're doing a long distance but like up to 50 kilometers you're not going to have an issue with the standard pegs and standard bars and all that crack obviously i would recommend upgrading your suspension and your fork internals this was built in 1987 then your you know your practicality is a practical i mean it's it is and it isn't it's it's, it's a bike from 1987 1988 uh, which depending on which model year you buy it is carbed um, it doesn't it doesn't hold much fuel but it is unbelievably reliable I've never had an issue with this bike um, other than what was just kind of age-related that was pretty easy to fix once I he held it but from a running perspective um, this bike was once leaking fuel out its tank it's the petcock in the tank and it still ran it still got me all the way to carry because it only leaked when I was sitting still so if you just kind of like ran the bike and filled it quickly it was absolutely fine so it's a really, really reliable bike. When I got it, the spark plugs needed change, and not sure how old the oil was, the coolant needed change, and etc. All that was done, and it never complained. It never once complained. So from a practical perspective, it's a very reliable bike, but I mean, it doesn't got a booty box. Uh, it doesn't have any form of security on it. The braking is meh. Um, I mean, it's probably not a practical bike, is it? I'm, I'm, I am biased, I love this thing, but it's, it's probably not a practical bike. But is it a fun bike? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the noises this thing makes, um, the way it goes around corners, the way it accelerates, the way it slows down, it is so much fun. It's so much fun and it's not, it's not fast, so it's safe fun because it's, it's never gonna be going so fast that like you get pulled over and they go, don't even, don't even worry about getting off the bike. We're gonna put you in a crate and put the two of you in a prison together because you're insane. Like it's not, it's not like, like that one, that one, that one right there, that one, that one has a little bit of that about it. Um, and to, to a certain degree, that one. They're, they're both very fast bikes. They're both modern, modern-ish and modern. Uh, inline fours, they're, they're fast. Like on the fun to practical scale, it's all the way to the fun end. Same as the Jigsaw. This is this is all of the way to the fun end. Um, it's just it's just great. Like I said, it's it's probably a little bit more towards practical than the Jigsaw because you have the rear seat. You can strap stuff onto it. It's definitely a much more malleable bike. You know what I mean? This thing, like I said, you could throw bad fuel in this, it's gonna run. You could throw good fuel in this, it's gonna run. You could abuse it, you could call it names, it's gonna run. Whereas the Jigs are probably go hide in the corner and cry. Not saying that that's not reliable as well. It is also very reliable, but I haven't experienced it. I can tell you firsthand, this bike, if looked after, is incredibly reliable. Does it look good dirty? Uh, that's the beautiful thing about this bike, is it, even when it's dirty, it doesn't look that dirty, because most of the dirt just hits the radiator, and that's that's about it. Like, the rest of it actually stays pretty clean um, through some form of magic. It's it's quite clean at the moment because I cleaned it, and it's dry outside, so it's for once, it's not going to get dirty instantly. Um, but, no, yeah, it's, it, looks, it looks fine dirty, and to be honest, it's nearly like a, a bit of personality, because this one, obviously, it has rusty bits. It has its age-related marks. It's it it's not it's not a show bike. Um, it's a used bike, and it shows. And I don't mind that it shows because it's got it's got the, the personality. You know, it's like it's like a 78-year-old Italian man who pisses on himself. You you might want to spend too much time around him, but he tells good stories. And that's it, really. Uh, the only thing I haven't really mentioned is the fuel economy, but that's fine. It's like I don't know. It was like 7.5 per hundred kilometer, something like that. Uh, so it's not bad, it's not, gro it's not good, it's not bad, it's completely tolerable, um, especially considering that I am not gentle with the throttle on this thing. I absolutely love cranking it, I love bringing it close to red line, if not all the way there, and it's still, it's still fine on fuel. I mean, it's not like it's burning 10 litres per 100, or it's not as bad as the MT-10. Um, if you want to talk to someone about bad fuel economy, talk to an MT-10 owner. It, those things drink fuel. Um, so yeah, I, pretty, pretty reasonable. No complaints there either.
What brought you to this video? Did you come here because you're considering a Super Magna for a commute? Uh, if you want more details on the Super Magna, I did a six month review. It's on my Gorilla Reviews playlist. I've also done a commuter review on the Suzuki and on the CBF. I've also done a first ride review on the CBF and the Suzuki. I'll eventually do long term reviews on them. Um, and I might eventually do another longer term review on this one because I've definitely gotten to know it more, but that's, that's way down the line. I'm talking like, long term. I've already done a six months review on this, but anyway, there you go. So they're all there if you want to see them on the playlist. Uh, but let me know why you did find your way here uh, in the comments. Let me know, would you buy a Super Magna for commuting um, and whether you're open roads like me or you're more city riding. Uh, this definitely is more suited to open roads, city riding. You're probably better off with a small, more modern bike, a smaller, more modern bike. As always, a very special thank you to my patrons, uh, your legends. And, and my patrons were the ones who kind of said, yeah, make this series. So this is all thanks to them. This series would not have happened. If they hadn't given the thumbs up for it, I probably would have tried to come up with something else. So uh, if you're enjoying these videos, please do let me know in the comments and thank the patrons because they made it happen. And until next time, thank you again for watching. Adios. Outro crew. If, if in the future I could like rent bikes somehow, um, something moved out there. I might be about to get murdered. If I do, I love you all. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Which one would you have? If, if I could rent bikes in the future, which one would you have for commutes? And the devastating news is, this is the last running bike I have uh, for commute reviews, so I'm gonna have to get creative. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. I might borrow, borrow some bikes. I know some people who might loan me some bikes, so we'll see, we'll see. Does that come to pass? Anyway, I am now off to enjoy the very rare sunshine and I hope wherever ye are, ye also have sunshine and are not locked in a circle of safety. Adios amigos.